again, it's, we're, as I said, we're Bluetooth wireless. We use machine to machine a triple desk encryption, which means that we actually, when somebody swipes their card on the reader, it's actually encrypted with three different encryption keys before it goes to the hub. This hub is actually up on the wall of your store. And depending on how many machines, you'll probably have you know two, three, or four of them. Just gets mounted you know, up towards the ceiling like that. It's, it's with a standard ethernet cable, it gets plugged into your, your high-speed router. So when somebody swipes their card, it's encrypted, as I said, to go to this device. This device then re-encrypts it to send it up to our website and then up to the credit card processor for payment. So it is totally secure. In order to sell credit cards, in order to accept credit cards today, you have to be PCI compliant. <coughs> compliant. And that's the payment card industry standards. And they are very rigid today. Um, I'm sure you've read over the years of all the different companies who've had breaches and they've had big fines. So your units have to be PCI compliant or they won't let you sell. Won't let you sell. No transactions are stored on site. We don't, tr no transactions are stored on this device or on the hub or on our server. They go straight through to the card processor. As I said, all parts of our reader meet or exceed all the PCI requirements, and we use the highest level of encryption. We also chose this reader. It's, it's a reader that's been in the field for a few years now, and it uses, it's, it's probably on about 50 to 60,000 vending machines, soda machines, and you might have seen it you know, in your travels, but it's made for outdoors, it's made for the harsh environment of a laundry. So it will handle the soap, the moisture, the humidity. Another thing, as this reader, as I said before, it's made to grow with you. We didn't want to use a reader that was only mag stripe, because what happens in two, three, four, five, six, seven years from now, and they change over, and those mag stripes start to disappear, and the majority of the people now have only contactless on there. You know, we don't want a system that, that has to be thrown away. We wanted a system that would grow with you. And then, what happens when new forms of payment come out that you haven't even thought of yet? People pay with phones in other parts of the world. Phone payments are going to be coming. Phone payments use a technology uh, called near, near field communication. Well, we've built that into here also. So when that comes, you're set up for it, okay? We build in the future. We don't build in obsolescence. We interface <coughs> all makes and models of machines. So no matter what you have, um, any of the Alliance brands, and the other guys too. So we, we do them all. <coughs> There's no on-site programming required. All machine parameters are reconfigured for you. So again, you could set up this unit, you don't need a PC on site. We enter all the information at the home office for you. We configure your machines. This is what we set up. So we select the brand of machine, the model number, the vent price. All you're going to tell us is position number one has Bluetooth ID 00043, because each machine has its own unique Bluetooth ID number. So all you have to do then is plug that machine in at the store, searches our web, and it finds its Bluetooth ID number, then it knows it belonged to Ed Schmidt, and it was a Horizon washer and it vended at 250. So it's very simple. Everything is done for you. So it's not like you have to worry. I, I, I won't be able to set this up for myself over there. We handle that all for you. You just have to plug it in. A two-line customer display. So it will tell you the vend price, use card, or coin. Just swipe your card, 
it will say authorizing two dollars or whatever the amount is so the customer knows it's happening it takes about 10 seconds because as i said we send it up encrypt it send it to the hub it goes to our internet our website and then to the credit card processor and then re-encrypt it to come back down that all takes 10 seconds it will say approve and then the machine will start You want to be the first to add it in your area because you're the one that's going to grab the customers from your competition. If promoted properly, you have to let people know you have it. Put signs up in your <coughs> store. Put, put uh, advertising in local pension. <coughs> now accept credit and debit cards. Like Tom had from uh, Speed Queen had said, he goes, McDonald's, 65% of their revenue is done on credit cards. They're the same clientele that comes into your office. When we got involved in credit cards back in the mid-90s and we were dealing with somebody, um, it was Bank of America at a time, and McDonald's was first testing their credit cards then, and they put it in 200 stores in California. Their average ticket went from 575 to 845 after they installed credit cards. So they spent hundreds of millions of dollars to put it on every line in every <coughs> McDonald's in the country. People spend more money on credit cards. It's proven in every industry. Let them use the card that's already in their wallet. Don't force them to buy a card that could only be used in your store. You will increase your customer base, new customers will come into the store that you never had before, and your customers will spend more money as well. Keep your coin while you reduce your collections but increase revenue. Now be able to get away for the weekend, push your large boxes, a lot of that income will be on credit cards now, so you won't be locked to your store. And on top of that though, you could feel free to give your keys to a manager because we're giving you full accountability of everything. So you'll know exactly what's going to be in your money box. And as the system includes a free loyalty card application. You don't pay extra, it's built into the system. All you do is buy the cards. As I said, great for wash, dry, and fold and for promotions. And be on vacation, be anywhere in the world, and log on and see what your store is doing, literally up to the second. It's, it's real time. We're always there for customer service. You always get somebody on the phone. Why credit cards? Why now? These are some interesting statistics. Everybody uses them. Everybody's used to using them in fast food, um, the coffee houses, parking. You know, it just—it's—it's it's endless. They used to. People don't walk around with cash anymore. They take it out. They're used to taking it out for two-dollar purchases. You know, walk into McDonald's. Everybody's paying with it. Soda machines, Snapple machines, video game rentals. Eighty percent of consumers currently own a debit card and 78 percent own a credit card. Those incredible numbers. And this is the contactless card I was talking about. Already 21 percent of consumers have a contactless debit card and 26 percent have a contactless credit card. And that is going to just go up. And 84% of the student population have a credit card. If you have a university by your location and you let them know you have it, you'll be, you're going to get all those that business. Credit card sales increased between 1989 and 2006 from 69 billion to 1.8 trillion. It's just it's astounding. Everybody will use it. And that's, there's very few things you could do to drive revenue into your store, and adding credit cards is just one of them. There's a bill, over a billion credit and debit cards in circulation in the US today. People, even the lower income people you think might not have them, they get paid on debit cards today. <coughs> Government subsidies are given on debit cards today. So a lot of people 
have a debit or credit card at their disposal. And this is Ed Starr. It's Ed and his wife in the picture. And this is just doing the installation. And you could see it on some machines. They're, unfortunately, they're hidden back here, but you can see what it looks like on the machines. They look great. They're easy for the customers to use. And, uh, and that's it. Now's the time. So if I could field any questions. Yep. Go ahead. Um, a lot of our machines, especially the washers, are set up for different bin prices for cold water and hot water. I noticed on your. Uh, okay. We have a, a button on here, and you can come up and see it after it's on this machine. Okay. Okay, that's, that's, that's live. And it's a button to select the wash price. So what this reader does is we set it up for the initial price, let's say the, the lowest price, let's say it's $3. So now they choose another uh, a three and a quarter or 350 wash. They just push the button to get up to that correct price and then swipe their card and then the, the unit would send over the correct pulses to start. If they forgot to do that, let's say they forgot, so they chose a three and a quarter wash on the machine, they swiped their card, they it took $3 off. So it sent over $3 worth of pulses, but now there's 25 cents left. Yeah. They could just swipe their credit card again, it will take off 25 cents and send it over and stop the machine. So for example, um, help me out, Michael, on or drop a quarter. Yeah. there's no or drop a quarter. Price, prices you could say. There's not really nine, because if you look at it, it's probably from three to 450 or something. Yeah. But there's probably like six or okay. five, four. The, re the reality, there's very different selections, but the reality is a dollar amounts are only about, probably about six. So the customer has to know, though, which price he's... The, let, me, let me put it this way. We thought this was a huge issue at the right, very yeah. beginning. And let's just let Ed, if you don't mind, Ed, just yeah. kind of tell him an actual experience. <coughs> but that's as technical as it gets, getting the price right. And that's as technical as it gets for the customer. And once they've done it, they, they know from then on. So what we try to do is we have signage there, uh, ample signage, so if they'll read, it'll tell them what to do. If, if they don't want choose to read it, we're usually there watching the first-time customers. And we tell them when they come in, if you want to use a credit card, let us help you the first time. And as he said, they just have to match up the two numbers, the number on the Speed Queen face and the number on the Spider Boy face, and then swipe the card. And I think we had one front one time that it was even an issue that somebody didn't understand it or didn't figure it out. Was that self-explanatory for the people? I'm in favor of the system, but we have customers. And you're not attentive. So. We're not attentive. Right. But we have customers who choose cold water and then they change the button and the machines wants another quarter and they come and get me and they say hey this machine thinks i owe another quarter and i said yeah you changed the water temperature <laughs> so it's got to be the way i've been talking about it, i want it as simple as buying gas you know like regular supreme or that whole water. it's as simple as it could get right now and listen Michael was very, you were skeptical. I was very skeptical. He, when yeah. we first put it in that store, he goes, I just don't think that's right. I go, Michael, trust me, we put it in enough stores already with multi pricing. It's a non issue. And it was. And yeah. it was a non issue. Yeah. We haven't heard the first person of Again, those are attended stores. There's, there's, so, there's signage up. We have some big 30 inch by 20 inch signs that are available in English and English and Spanish. And they put them up there, and it's they're they're nice. You can see what they look like on our website, www.setomatic.com, and uh, click on Spider Wash credit card system, and you can see exactly what the signs say. There, it, it is not it is not an issue. We are in plenty of unattended stores. People know how to use the credit. People use the credit card every place. The learning curve. Don't forget, the learning curve is once. 